Albert Camus, a biography, initially published in 1979 with a new edition in 1997 by Herbert R. Lotman, offers a thorough exploration of the life of Albert Camus, 1913-1960, the renowned Nobel Prize-winning author, French philosopher, journalist, and World War II figure. Recognized as a notable inclusion on the 1979 ALA Notable Books for Adults list, Lotman's biography is characterized by its clear and descriptive prose. The narrative unfolds chronologically, providing insights into Camus' lineage, childhood, early adulthood, involvement with the Communist Party, and his tumultuous relationships. Divided into five parts, Mediterraneans, Exile, Fame, Forty, and The Road Back, the biography offers a multifaceted portrait of Camus. Beginning with his humble origins in Belcourt, Algiers, where he grew up in a poor and illiterate household, the book traces his journey through adversity and self-reinvention. Despite facing challenges, including the loss of his father during World War I and a battle with tuberculosis that ended his soccer career, Camus perseveres and transforms himself during his university years. Navigating political activism, Camus joins the Communist Party in the mid-1930s and becomes involved in organizing a labor theater. Through these experiences, he begins to shape his literary voice, writing his inaugural play, Le Temps du Mepris. However, his personal life is marked by turmoil, notably his failed first marriage to a young woman struggling with addiction. Throughout these trials, Camus emerges as a figure of resilience and intellectual curiosity, setting the stage for his later literary and philosophical contributions. Afterward, he undergoes a transformation, embracing his Mediterranean heritage and immersing himself in the Mediterranean literary cultural movement while dedicating himself to his theater group. The first segment concludes with another debilitating bout of tuberculosis. He and his wife, Francine, temporarily depart from North Africa to France in 1942 for the sake of his health. Initially, she returns to Algiers to secure employment and accommodations, but they find themselves stranded in mainland France due to an Allied landing in Algiers and a subsequent German invasion. The second section, titled Exile, opens with the German occupation of southern France, plunging Camus into dire financial straits and separation from his homeland and loved ones. Struggling for financial stability, he writes for monetary gain and tangentially involves himself in the resistance effort by aiding in the publication of the underground newspaper Combat. While in occupied Paris, he forges friendships with Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir. The year 1944 marks the emergence of Combat from clandestinity, coinciding with the massive uprising leading to the liberation of Paris. Upon his return to Algiers in 1945, Camus confronts a troubled nation, grappling with famine and interethnic tensions. Advocating for moderation and the rights of the Muslim community, he also serves as a war correspondent, documenting French-occupied territories. Leveraging his newfound post-war renown as a member of the combat newspaper team, Camus embarks on a press tour and lecture series in New York. The third part, Fame, commences as Camus, back in Paris from his American sojourn, is honored with the Resistance Medal. He pens a series of articles denouncing violence, whether in war with weapons of mass destruction or through executions, reflecting his lifelong opposition to the death penalty. Retreating from political engagements, he refocuses on his literary pursuits. However, his tuberculosis exacerbates, leading him to devote his convalescence to reading and writing. Despite combat facing challenges and potential closure, Camus, hampered by health issues and creative disagreements with the editors, declines offers to assume control of the publication. Meanwhile, as France gradually emerges from the aftermath of the war, Camus' literary works attract increasing public and critical acclaim. His book La Peste receives a literary prize, propelling it to bestseller status. However, Camus finds his newfound celebrity somewhat burdensome, while he enjoys dining out and socializing at night, he now finds himself constantly recognized. Nevertheless, the upside to his fame is the expanded platform it affords him. As the Cold War begins, he pens essays advocating for global peace, urging the world to steer away from the path of war. The fourth segment, 40, commences as Camus celebrates his 40th birthday. Despite his continued involvement in politics, he remains steadfast in his advocacy for peace and condemnation of violence and murder. Notably, he protests vehemently when a demonstration escalates to police firing on the crowd. Meanwhile, his wife Francine falls ill, prompting the family to retreat to the Lake of Geneva for her recovery. 
Here, Camus once again immerses himself in reading and writing, given his own health limitations. In 1954, he advocates for peace, amnesty, and the rights of Algerian Muslims, attributing the rise in Arab terrorism to liberal failures and oppression. The following year, he returns to journalism, contributing to L'Express, a liberal-leaning weekly magazine. He plays a pivotal role in facilitating a meeting between opposing Muslim and French factions in Algiers, aimed at brokering a truce and fostering peace, despite disruptions from violent right-wing extremists. In 1957, at the age of 44, Camus is awarded the Nobel Prize. The final segment, The Road Back, documents Camus' last years. Tragically, he dies suddenly in a car accident and is laid to rest in the Catholic section of the cemetery, despite his lack of religious affiliation. Throughout Europe, he is mourned and eulogized, with one of the most poignant tributes coming from his former friend turned foe, Sartre, who acknowledges Camus' unwavering commitment to morality and humanism in both his public and private life. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.